Picture this. You're on a sidewalk and in front of you are trash cans, empty water bottles, scooters, and you need to be able to navigate that sidewalk without touching or bumping into any of those obstacles. And now you need to do it completely blind. But not to worry, you've got your trusty guide dog or guide robot by your side. This is not a futuristic fairy tale. This is something that's in development right now by some of the smartest minds I've ever met. Hi everyone, I'm Laura from DoggyU, and I'm a certified guide dog mobility instructor, trick trainer, and service dog trainer. And this month I was in a competition with teams around the globe to see if we could use this guide robot to be the first ever to complete this ambitious race without the use of human vision. This last year I've gotten to be a part of the development of a new robot up at the University of Massachusetts in the DAROS, or Dynamic and Autonomous Robotic Systems Lab, whose goal is to be able to guide blind and visually impaired individuals safely through the world, all culminating in an international competition called the Cybathlon, where teams from across the world bring the assistive technology they've developed to compete against each other in a variety of tasks, all in the name of making life easier for people with disabilities through assistive technology and it's been a wild ride. Well, I started with just doing an initial research interview in 2022, I was brought onto the team about three months ago to help start preparing for the live stream Cybathlon in Zurich. Cybathlon is international competition and events in which teams consisting of technology developers from universities, companies, or NGOs, and a person with disabilities tackle various everyday tasks with their latest assistive technology. The participants with physical disabilities show how to tie shoelaces with a robotic arm prosthesis, balance on rocks with a prosthetic leg, or overcome uneven terrain with an exoskeleton. The whole competition was amazing, and we were all so excited to compete. The vision races that we were participating in were the first of its kind. We were literally doing something that had never been done before, and we were ready to show up. But were we going to take home the gold? For the competition, my father was going to be the experienced guide dog user manning the robot, but he was used to dog guides, not robots. I was there in a coaching capacity to help both the guide dog handler, called the pilot, and the alternate pilot, another guide dog user, learn to use the tech and implement it in the competition events, while helping the engineering team make the technology accessible to the pilots. I was there to help problem solve and essentially marry human and machine, hopefully not Terminator style. It was a really interesting role to play as I was part OT, part coach. And I got to watch the engineering team problem solve and steadily improve on the robot named Summer and her capabilities. And if you found this video interesting so far, do me a favor and go down and boop that like button. It helps others find this channel and spread the word about the assistive technology that's going to help people navigate the world more safely. Cool if Jake and I would be so grateful. Now I'm not going to pretend to be able to explain to you the engineering surrounding this four-legged robot. I'm a dog trainer, I'll go ahead and stay in my lane. But you can learn more at the website that I'm going to link down below that has some videos and more information on how this amazing technology works to identify obstacles in the path while having the robot, guide dog, and handler navigate around them safely. And if you're a guide dog handler or a service dog handler yourself, you might be thinking, why would I want to use a robot over my amazing guide dog? And as in all things, there's pros and cons, just like there's pros and cons to cane travel versus guide dog travel. While a dog guide provides both navigation and companionship, a guide robot doesn't require trips outside to use the bathroom in the rain or snow, it doesn't require exercise if you get the flu and are sick, you won't be allergic to it, it doesn't take up space at your feet when you're flying on a plane, it doesn't need to be fed or watered, and it doesn't bark at your neighbors, though it'll definitely make your neighbors look twice. There's always pros and cons to every assistive device, and this one's no different. But having options for people to move through the world more efficiently is never a bad thing. An example of having options is people who use a glucose monitor but also a diabetic alert dog. Using both animal and machine makes the human safer overall. So what do you think? Would you ever use a dog guide? Go down to the comments below and let me know and tell me what you think the pros and cons of using an animal versus a machine to do a job might be. Okay, back to our journey to competition. My major contribution in the actual design of the robot was having so much dog gear in my car that when we ran into a problem, I was able to fashion together a bunch of leashes to be able to solve that problem. Well, the first task of the competition was navigating an obstacle course. The second was to have the robot guide find a table, have a human pour water into a glass, and then carry a tray with a full bowl of water onto a secondary table, and then set that table without touching any of the place settings. 
To do this, the human had to have both hands free to be able to carry the tray to the second table, which means we needed a tether system to get them attached to the robot that kept them from tripping over the robot, but also being able to feel enough tension for the robot to guide. Boom, I MacGyvered three short leashes together and a treat pouch, and we had a functional, albeit not the most elegant, solution to the problem. The second task is also where additional assistive technology came into play. How can you pour a glass of water within two centimeters of the top of the cup without any vision, as well as not being able to use any physical markers like sticking your finger into the cup to tell the height? How do you carry a tray across the room so totally level that a wide mouth bowl of liquid that's only two centimeters from the top of that bowl doesn't spill? The Darrow Slab developed the tech that used a series of sensors and haptic technology that would buzz until the water was full and then shut off so the human knew when to stop pouring. It also let the human know when the tray was level to keep the water and bowl from spilling and multiple vibrating wristbands would let you know which way to tip the tray to keep it level. It was pretty neat, but integrating the human and the tech was the challenging part. The humans had to learn new patterns of motion to use during the competition. It took a lot of practice to get it right, and the pilots worked incredibly hard. Are you excited? I am excited. It's crazy, but I'm excited. <laughs> Futuristic. Hanging out outside, waiting for them to set up the course so that uh, I, I Bill can, doesn't see it. I could, <laughs> they, they made, the doctor said I don't need the blindfold, but we're going with it. So I have sensors here, 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 here. And that will tell me left, right, forward, back. This is the robotic guide dog attachment. And I'm hoping that we can do really well. In the end, we didn't win the competition, despite the incredibly hard work and all-nighters that the engineering team put in working tirelessly to get the robot ready for the event. But in reality, the competition was just a single moment in time, information the team's going to use to further refine the robot dog and come back with even better tech in the years to come as we speed towards integrating robots as assistive devices for humans to live with even more independence. What a wild time we live in where guide dogs and guide robots could coexist. All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you're into dog training, dog travel, or service dogs, you're in the right place. Make sure you boop that like button and subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell so you get notified anytime a new video comes out. And if you wanna learn more about dog training and support this channel, head on over to the DoggyU community at patreon.com slash doggyu, where you can get access to my private training videos along with my monthly live Q&A. And if you like this video, the algorithm robot says you'll definitely like this one too. So you should probably click on it. You all have an awesome day and happy training.